What is good everyone? We are back. Today is a push day. This is a new session that we haven't actually been through yet and we have the return of the dumbbell press. So I'm really excited to get stuck in. Um, the first time around, I actually have done the session once already, so it's the second time on the rotation now. I actually managed seven kilo dumbbells as the first little touch. And to be honest, it felt pretty easy. So I'm really excited to get stuck in today's session and take you through it. So to begin with, we'll have the incline dumbbell press and then we'll actually have reverse banded incline Smith machine press. And I will show you how to actually reverse band to get the most out of it. Again, the reason why we reverse band the incline Smith is much to, more so to match the resistance profile with the strength curve of the actual muscle of the chest. Um, especially going from the dumbbell work where, again, the resistance profile will be very heavy in the bottom range. Following on from that, we want to take some of the pressure off the bottom range and obviously adjust the resistance profile to obviously match the strength of the chest and take a lot of pressure off the delt and all the joint and connective tissue. So taking the tension off the hole is actually going to make the movement far, far better in that sequence. So again, timing and purpose is everything as to when and why and how we reverse band it. Also, we're not gonna reverse band it like a bungee jump. We are gonna learn to reverse band it to just take the tension of the bottom of the movement. So I will be quite strategic with it and I will show you how to do it and why. Um, and I'm probably gonna do a separate video on reverse banding in general uh, because it is a subject that I believe many people are touchy about simply because they are not really using reverse banding effectively they're using it more as a bungee jump rather than to take the actual, you know, the machine from a certain resistance profile to another and making it more even across the board. Whereas what I see people is they kind of wrap the band, especially a green band, around the machine. So basically the band pretty much is on from the start. That makes no sense. So that's not that's not really the purpose of that. But anyway, I'm gonna get a pre-workout meal, drink my coffee, and then we'll get stuck in. To the session. Gonna sort for the dagger in the best one. Young boy and I'm babbling the best lines. And you know I give a rough about sometimes, yeah. Oh, yeah, shams, you can take my sip. Yeah. Baseline hits some more eight line this. Oh, yeah, shams, you can take my sip. Baseline hits some more eight line this. Today's choice of panel is this. If you see me training and you try and approach me mid set, just. <laughs> Just kidding. You're more than welcome to approach me after the set. Not mid set though, please. Or not where I'm just about to do a set. Yeah, push session going down. So like I mentioned today, I'll take you through a little bit of sequence as to what we do and how and why. Uh, but in general, I feel like this, this push session especially really ticks off a lot of boxes for me. Especially the dumbbell press, I really love pressing. So I definitely feel like it's giving me a little bit what I need. And it's still very specific to areas that I do need to bring up. So what you'll realise is there's very little volume here for my actual arms because I don't really do much arm work at the moment. The dominant focus right now for my physique is, and has been for some time, is obviously bringing up my back. A little bit more width, so a little bit more delt, and obviously overall more size and density, which will come, and it's coming. So I will do a general update very, very soon. But for now, we're going to get stuck into a session. I'm going to get warmed up and I've got my little apparel and tools ready that we are going to use today. Uh, so yeah, I'll take you through it. Really actually looking forward to this. I've had a good night's sleep. I had a really early night last night. Uh, pretty much adjusted my routine a little bit now to basically be able to get in bed for pretty much no later than quarter past eight. I know, pretty sad. And then the wake time is 5 a.m. and literally as soon as I wake up, coffee and get after it, get on the work. Uh, but I still will highlight that I do wake up early still. I think that's definitely a good habit that I have developed and that is firmly engraved in me. I feel like each their own, you know, people want to live their life how they want to live, but I want to be successful both in and out of the gym and I feel like that comes with a cost. And that cost unfortunately is being super super regimented and super disciplined to my craft both in and out of gymnasium so let's fucking get after it man pull up ain't talking a reload shit but stores no need for a key though man i take aim but this ain't a free throw though man i bustin if you're coming at me though blah bustin if you're coming at me though blah bustin if you're coming at me though blah man i take aim no free throw no man i bustin if you're coming at me though man pull up ain't talking a reload shit but stores no need for a key though man i take Transvestite in the park, that he looks in your back. It won't be any time you probably drink. Man, I'm asking you. 
I'm not showing. That's the more I've done. So, dumbbells are probably my, one of my favorite exercises for chest. Again, it only makes sense for me to actually start with dumbbell work to begin with. When you are fresh, when you still have a lot of strength and length and range. So now moving on, the way we are going to reverse band the incline smith to actually make the most out of it is you want the tension to really come off. As you come out of the hole, Probably as you get to mid range, the top range, you want the tension to completely come off. So, what you will see here is at the top of the movement, there's no resistance. As you can see, the only time really the band comes in is at the very bottom of the movement. So, when you do opt to use any sort of reverse band, make sure you do it accurately so it actually makes sense and you're not just using it to make a movement easier. When you use it effectively, you will actually make the movement harder. Yes. 
Fish it. Take it. Yes. Okay. Come on. 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 I've done my, I've done my, I've done my touch, so I'm waiting for you. So, moving on to dips now. Dip, I would never consider doing a dip as a total isolation movement, just because there's so much involved to actually perform the movement to its full range of motion, you have to use a degree of pec, you have to use a degree of, degree of uh, actual front delt. And when you actually look at the alignment of the dip, it's a perfect exercise to actually be able to target a lot of bit of pec, a lot of bit of delt and tricep. So for me, a dip is always done to really capitalize on doing so. So we've done our isolation one, our compound work for chest. Now we're gonna move on to more of a compound movement that will cover everything. Our tricep, shoulder and lower pec to a degree. And then from here, we'll move on to our isolation work for chest, shoulders and tricep. Uh, but first, the first working set we're actually gonna do with uh, just load. So we're just gonna do, um, using the belt, we're gonna add the load on. But what you'll notice the back offset, we'll actually use a, a chain, 25 kilo chain. The whole purpose of using chain is, again, adjusting this is profile. So as we come down, it's gonna drop off in the lengthening range of the stretch, where we are more vulnerable, where we are obviously um, to a degree weaker. And then as we drive up, the load comes up and gets heavy as we get to the top. So, there is some thought behind it. It's not just fancy shit. Get it to the chair.
So first portion of the workout, always, always focus on the big compound work. So the movements that we need the most energy for, the movements that will always involve more than one muscle group. And I believe, to a degree, that is what should always be prioritised around your programming. With exceptions, around your training age, around injuries, and around the certain phases you are in. But, that doesn't change the fact that 90% of the time you should focus on the bigger movements and that is where you should prioritise them as well. However, there are instances where you would be exhausted and you would almost do little things to actually limit load exposure, such as obviously post-show period. As you have seen from previous videos, I did actually do that in the past. But now, we are in a place where we are safe to load shit up we do not do anything that will put exhaust us and potentially limit load exposures. Right now, that is the goal. The goal is to get as strong as we physically can with as good a form as we physically can. So, this is my second session now. I'm doing a top set of 70s. And one extra rep, and I'll give you much better reps. I still need one more session on 70s before I stop progressing the load. So, with a new movement like this, I like to take my time and be patient because I'm gonna run this movement now for the next 15, 20 weeks. So, if I go up, a couple of reps here and there, keep my form standardised, I should never see massive jumps in loading and weight. So, I will be taking 80s for good reps by the end of this push up, mark my words. Can't wait.
a little bit of uh, extra pressure obviously for those who don't know but many of you do know we probably have the biggest powerlifting community in the country in this gym which is amazing because i love powerlifting i love anything to do with lifting but uh we've got brother here two years ago i basically said to him look if you don't pull 300 you're barred oh, and that was no and that was the last day when Jim was allowed to stay open just before obviously the pandemic and he actually pulled it he did it he pulled 300 on the last day and then it was locked down so he did well I didn't want to do the bodybuilding comp with wife with no breath don't worry I don't think you'd be able to do a bodybuilding comp uh, that was that power belly lad <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Before you get offended, guys. Brett loves his power belly, so I'll leave him alone. process now with myself and coaching others and I was training the more I see the flaws that I had in the past like I always say to you guys from the series before learning from mistakes I think the urgency to progress my body weight and my performance has always been too high leading to me being just basically impatient and taking progression not so much when it's not there but being too greedy with progression in the gym and out of the gym and that inevitably leads to not making progress and Bodybuilding is a weird sport where it's a battle of consistency, patience, and commitment. So the way you have to structure your whole seasons, it's basically all about patience. It's about patience with your food, it's about patience with progression in the gym, so that you don't see yourself trying to complete a full off season within the space of three to four weeks, because that is often what I have done in the past. That has basically led me to not making progress. And that is often what I see these days with people. It's like, they force the body weight on, so so quick and they take all these lift progressions fact of the matter is guys if you take any large progression both in and out of the gym whether it's your body weight rising too quick or whether it's your lift rising too quick we know for a fact it is going to be shit progression there's no ways around it it really will again it's only possible to build so much muscle and it's only possible to get so much stronger over a period of time and again, we're not powerlifters. The whole point is to create more tension in the muscle. And that takes time, that takes better execution, and that takes refining some movements. Even like today, I said to Mark, I said, look, my pec feels a little tighter. So I specifically opted to even improve my tempo for last time, and I still got progression. But coming away from that dumbbell set, I literally felt like I did, I did a set of pec neck. My chest was blown up. So what would I get more stimulus from? Taking a lift progression and taking 72s, for less reps or even matching the reps and making the reps worse or scaling back my execution, scaling back my tempo, controlling the numbers more and having more tension on the muscle, that's the goal. So just a bit of a, a lesson for you all guys, something that obviously I have been very, very big on, especially as obviously myself and Mark, is being patient. And one thing that I've been drilling into Mark, especially is being patient. I've almost been like holding him back yeah. from getting too carried away in the urgency to do it all at once. Because again, we've got big plans for Mark, especially with his off season and obviously his prep coming towards 2023. 
And in order for it all to come to fruition, we have to be patient because the progress will come. It's just a case of making the progress over the timeline we have set, rather than trying to make it over the next month or two. You know, I want Mark to be sitting 135 kilo, still feeling good, still being in shape. But unfortunately, that's going to take time and a lot of patience. You know, and the biggest thing is, is when you start making progress, you start seeing changes. Your first reaction is to want more. So people make changes to get more, but then once they make these changes to speed things up, that is when it all comes to shit. So a little bit of lesson for you to wrap up, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Share, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. And keep following the journey. Obviously, this is our process, and I'm looking forward to sticking more content up and showing you all what we're about to do with this year and the next.